were amazing actually. I am so glad I actually went to pay it. I didn't have very high expectations because of the lot of black decks existing, but I gambled that I'm not gonna play with a lot of Lutes and RP Law. That didn't work out, so I did play with only Lutes and RP Laws, but it did make it in top cut, which is nice. So for a start, I have uh, four Peronas. Uh, they're very important in your deck. You, you really need to have them so you can actually uh, mill the cards that they're like bad on the bottom of the deck or uh, fix your deck in a way that you can actually work it out. Uh, you don't want to cut this, so I'm just gonna do it on the other way around so it can help also. So you don't want to cut this, it's one of the best cards. You can't go three because the engine already runs way too many warlords, so you cannot also, uh, you can avoid a lot of whiffs, let's say. Then we have the blocker, Dofi, four of those. Definitely need it. This you don't cut. It's like it's very important. It's uh, one of the. Uh, it's your only blocker in the deck, and it's extremely important to actually as well fix the cards as much as you want in your deck. Um, yes. Then you have the Moria. This is one of the more underestimated cards in the deck. So uh, when I was start playing Dofi, it was a bit nerf to use it. But the more you play the deck, you can actually feel that this card is one of the strongest cards in the deck. Because, um, like in an 8 dot turn, you can play Moria, play the, pick up the Weevil, and then play Leader Ability in a Jinbe that brings up the Weevil and draw an extra card. So, with, you just play three body in one turn, and it's very, very strong against black ones. So, very needed card. I would not cut a single one of them. Uh, then we have one of the best cards, of course, in the deck, which is Jinbe. Yeah, you don't play less than four, it's impossible. It's uh, one of the reasons why this is a very strong deck. You need it, you need to uh, keep up the tempo. You need to, uh, in specific matchups, you really need to be aggressive. In other matchups, you can play just to set up your board. So it's a card that it's 100% guaranteed needed four times. And of course, you have the second best card in the deck, which is Weevil. So this one is, yeah. When it came out, I just, I was insanely happy. It's like, before even OPO7, this is the card that I wanted. I wanted a 6k Warlord, a 6k power Warlord, and this one also gives you a card. I was happy even with 6k Vanilla, and getting a card extra, I was very, very happy. Then we have uh, one Gekko Moria, Vanilla. So, I'm, I know a lot of people are playing two or three, but I think I would even cut uh, the one. So. The only reason I have it there is because of the ratio of Warlords. So sometimes you can gamble on 7k and you can get like a 6k body. And this is literally the only reason why I have the Gekko Moria. And uh, otherwise I would prefer literally any other 4 cost Warlord. Like Moria or... Okay, except the 2k's. And then we have the Warlord uh, low. This is very important card for Nami matchup. But not as good on the other matchups. In the current meta at least. Uh, you play four of them, of course, because it's a tricky counter, but uh, there will be rare times that you will actually need to use leader ability to take it back in your hand. Most of the times I only use it... Well, I only use it for Nami, that's it. Uh, which I had also in Matope. So, then you have the another 2k, which is Crocodile. So, just a 2k. Uh, although, to be fair, because George will bring the Red Green Law back in the meta, this is gonna be very popular. You can play it and bounce a, a 2k back in the hand, so you can bounce like the choppers or non searcher cards. <laughs> Important. <laughs> so you can have like a harder time, let's say, on the samples. Not that much, but anything you can get. Literally anything you can get. Then you have Mihok. It's a 2k counter. Uh, also underestimated card. I played a lot of times just to draw, so you can filter a lot of your bricks on this one. With just one done. So it's a very, very strong card, and uh, you cannot play less than four. And now we go to one of my favorite cards, which I absolutely love, and it's Pudding. I would not cut a single one in the current meta. And I know a lot of people will say three are enough. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. I, I, I want to see them. So I don't want to have like the odds of, ah, you know what, I play an important match, which is yellow or black, yellow, Luffy or uh, Nami, and I don't have the card and I have to mulligan and gamble my cards. So to me, I think Pudding is definitely needed four times for the current meta again. Like if the meta becomes different, of course more aggressive, then you can cut it down to three. 
then we have two boa with <laughs> I really dislike that cut when it came out. I thought it's not gonna work on Dofi and this probably is one of my worst mistakes I could possibly make. The card is absolutely perfect. Like the fact that it's 8K helps you on red uh, on red purple law. Uh, it's it's amazing. Even on black matchups, it helps you to keep one Moria out, and it's a six cost body, which is also very painful for black decks. Actually, for Moria only, not for uh, Lucy, but it's amazing. Uh, and probably I'm gonna put the third one on the deck, and I'm gonna cut one. Uh, I'll, I'll explain one event. So then we have three Kaido. I know a lot of people uh, do uh, play like either Sanji's or they play um, different uh, big bodies like Mihawk. I don't like it. I really believe Kaido is one of the best ones, if not the best, at least in this meta. You need him in a lot of matchups, and uh, on contrary to everyone's words, you really need it on RP Law. And uh, I can explain how I play the matchup because I had four RP Laws in the tournament and I win all four of them. And I had four Luchis and I lost four from those two Luchis. And that was my X2. So I have 50% on Luchis and I got 100% against that loss. With a specific gameplay. And then I have uh, three Red Rock. This is probably the card I'm gonna cut. Not all of them, I think you still need two. So I would probably cut this for one Boa. And uh, you need two for the yellow matchup. Just to make more comfortable the NLs, the, sorry, the NLCS or uh, even the Bonis, like they can have like a Zoro, you need it, definitely. So I would cut one, but I would definitely play two. And I uh, have to, you have to spam the match to actually see if it feels very, very well against Bonis. Although I do believe that Bonnie and RP Law and Lucy require specific gameplay to actually beat them. Then we have one of the cards that won me like God knows how many games. It's a Gravity uh, Tiger, or whatever it's called. It's a seven cost event that bottoms two cards. So this is very important to actually have it. It's very good against RP Law, it's very good against Black Yellow Luffy, it's very good against Nami. People don't believe it, but this is very, very good against Nami. Especially when they have the three cost blogger and one cost Kaya, you just bottom both of them and it's plus two cards on their deck. So it's insane. And uh, you don't need less than uh, three, and you definitely don't need more. So three, I think, is the perfect ratio. Then we have one Gum Gum Rain, which is uh, a very clutch card. This card actually won me a game because I did have it in my hand. So I'm not gonna remove it. Maybe I'll put the second one. I'll think about it, and uh, yeah, we'll see. I think two is a bit. Uh, no, I think two is too much. One is enough, but I'll think about what I'm actually gonna place and one perfume so this one won me three or four games and I know a lot of people are saying that it's like hey it's lucky you have one perfume but the deck is not lucky like you can you can have five let's say uh, warlords on your uh, top deck and you do Perona if you know you're going aggressive and you know you need perfume both of them and then five useless cards can go both and then five good ones can actually come to your Hand, which can be the seven cost events or the perfume. It's very important to understand that two of them is very bricky. I would not play two. One is more than enough, more than enough. And uh, yeah, I think it's excellent card in general. So this is it. If you guys want, I can go through the matchups. Uh, like for me, RP Law, it requires a specific game plan. I actually give a shout out to Joanna. He's uh, one of our friends because she was, uh, she beat me 3-0 on RP Law, and because he beat me 3-0, that's how I can actually knew how to play the RP Law matchup. And uh, the reason, the way to do it is, you have to counter everything. Like, no matter what he does in 5Ks and 6Ks, even if you go down to 2 or 1 card, you have to counter it. Play for the board control and drop the Kaido, and you immediately win the game. If you take too many unnecessary hits, 5s and 6, you're probably gonna lose. Like, I tested the game so much, and this is how we won the four. Maybe they can find a counter uh, tactic to that, obviously. But uh, the way I beat them is exactly like that. I play uh, defensive, I counter all of the hits that I can. Play the seven cost events and Kaidos. Refill my hand and get the board control and eventually win. And uh, for the people that they doubt it, 
I had also one matchup that was very good one, and I ended with three HP, and he had three rages, and I still won with that te technique. So it was a very very good matchup, and uh, this is how I play the matchup. I really suggest you guys try it. It's very promising. Uh, Lucci, you have to be aggressive. Don't play defensive, you cannot have to control them, it's absolutely impossible. If they start hitting with Morias, you have no chance. You have to drop them on 0 HP as fast as you can, and then play Perfume and finish them, because they can just puke a lot of blockers, swarm everything, and yeah, you have no chance. And uh, Bonnie, Bonnie is very important, the 7 cost events are very uh, needed. But the advice I can give to uh, Dofi players against Bonnie is not swing if they have a body like Cavendish and another one. Because a lot of Bonnie players play the uh, green wrist and low and they can swing to your bodies and take all of your bodies. Don't do that. Wait, swarm the board, play the 7 cost event, bottom everything, then start swinging. Because then they cannot uh, do anything about this. Also important to try to be defensive on Bonnie. The reason why I'm saying that is because there are two Bonnie decks, but the most popular one and the best one, in my opinion, is the aggressive one. With the, you don't play kids, basically, so be careful on that one. Enels, Nami's, your best matchups. Black, Yellow, Luffy, your best matchup, definitely. Uh, you have the 7 cost event on Hisabo, you have Pudding, they cannot take easy swings, so swarm the board, don't hit, and then start swinging fives with everything. If they take it, they lose, if they don't, you pudding. Yeah, yeah sorry, if you if they take it, you pudding. If they don't, yeah, they automatically lose because they have no hand. So a very good matchup for you. So that's my way of actually going to pay it, guys. I really suggest everyone to try this. Uh, I know most people won't actually say how they beat other decks, but I think it's very nice to the community to actually help each other out and hey, how did this guy go uh, top eight? This is how I did. I played, uh, I don't know if I mentioned my matchups, uh, from the first uh, nine games, uh, I play first one black yellow Luffy, four RP lows, and four Luchis. And then I went to uh, day two, and I played Nami, which I went to zero, and then I played red green low, which he whooped my ass. So, yeah, Crazy. <laughs> that's it, guys. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and good luck on your games.